Happy Sabbath, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I have a topic today that I'd like to share with you, one that I think is important as we draw closer to Passover, a topic that is going to be familiar to you, but it's maybe not one that we dive into a lot or think of on a deeper level. It's something that we just kind of see and move on. And that topic is the topic of salvation. The topic of salvation. So when I mention that, the topic of salvation, what does that conjure up in your mind? What does that mean to you? Is salvation something you look forward to? Is salvation something that uh, you take for granted? What is this about salvation? Well, I think there's one common thread that if I'm going to talk about salvation, we could all agree on, and that is every single person that believes in Christ as their Lord and their Savior believes in salvation and believes that they need salvation, hence Christ being our Lord and Savior. So I think anybody who calls on the name of Christ as their Savior acknowledges that and understands that, that we have sinned, we have fallen short, and because of that, we need to be saved because the death penalty is what we deserve, but salvation takes us away from that penalty. So as Christians, that's a very simple and straightforward concept when it comes to salvation. But today, what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to look a little bit deeper into it. Uh, see if there's a little bit more to salvation and kind of how we perceive salvation, how we see it, how important it is to us. Uh, and I'd like to look at some things that salvation is and that salvation is not. And some of the misconceptions that people might have towards salvation. So I've got three points today, so we'll go ahead and start with the first point. And the first point, if you want to write it down, is salvation is not a destination. It's a transformation. So I want you to think about that for a second. Salvation is not a destination. It's a transformation. Meaning salvation is not something we're looking forward to one day. That this is, this is a place we're going to be saved. Salvation is a transformation that is happening currently, in your life, in the way you live. And to support this, let's go ahead and start by turning over to Romans 12. And we'll go ahead and read Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. And Paul states here, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what Paul's talking about here is being a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, that is something that is continuing. That is something that is alive and moving forward. That is what we are transformed into, a living sacrifice. So the first point I want to dwell on here is, is just that salvation is not a destination. It's a transformation. Moving on to the second point. This is one we could struggle with a lot, I think, and it's a common misconception. So I would phrase it this way. Second point is salvation is not something we achieve. Salvation is something we receive. Again, salvation is not something we achieve. Salvation is something that we receive. And this is important to understand. If we look at salvation as something that we can achieve, something that we can work towards, then it's no longer a gift. It's something that we have worked towards and achieved. But we understand when we read Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9, salvation is a gift. So let's go ahead and turn over there and see how Paul stated that. Because Paul was very clear and emphatic about what he said in Ephesians. Ephesians 2, verses 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. By grace you have been saved through faith, and it is a gift of God. Paul is very clear here that it's not of works, otherwise we'd boast. And along with what Paul was saying, just even common sense tells us if we think of salvation as something that we are working towards, something that we are going to achieve, something that we can earn, then it is no longer a gift. 
So think of salvation being a gift in this manner. If you had a friend stop by, you know, out of the blue, and they just said, you know what, I was out today, I saw something, it reminded me of you, and here you go, I brought you this gift. I was thinking of you, I want you to have it, it's a gift to you. You did nothing to earn it. You didn't pay for it. You didn't do anything. You didn't achieve it. It's strictly a gift from a friend. That's our salvation. It's a gift from our God. In the same way, we didn't earn it. We didn't achieve it. It's a gift from God. Now consider salvation in this light also. Continuing on with that analogy. So you receive this gift. What happens if you don't value that gift? What happens if you take that gift and you go, you know, really, this isn't something I value. This isn't something I want. What do you end up doing? Well, you end up giving it away, don't you? You end up giving it away. Either you throw it away, you set it aside and kind of get rid of it some other way, or you regift it. But the reality is you get rid of it because you don't value it. Our salvation is the same way. It is a gift from God, but if we do not value it, we can also give it away. And we can also get rid of it. So I want to make an emphasis on this point. And that's point two, is salvation is not something we achieve, it's something we receive. And even back in Deuteronomy, if we look back in Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20, let's go ahead and follow up on this a little bit more. Um, Deuteronomy 13, or Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 through 20, we can see that God gave Israel a gift. He said, I call heaven and earth as a witness to you against you today, that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give to them. God took this gift of a way of life, and he gave it to Israel. And he set it before them as a gift. And he says, I set before you a gift, life. You have two choices. You have one choice, two different directions, I should say. You choose death, or you choose life. And God says, choose life, not death. But it's a gift to have a way of life. And then God put out there a way of living. That's what he did for Israel. Because he gave them the gift of life. So moving on to my third point. For us as Christians, kind of goes back to the original statement I made. Salvation is not a future event. Salvation is a way of life. And I hope we see it that way. I hope we understand that salvation is a way of life. It's not something that just happens one time in the future. Let's go ahead and turn over to Romans 8, and we'll read verses 12 through 17 to kind of cement this in. Starting in Romans 8, we'll go ahead and start verse 12 of Romans 8. It says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Did you catch that? If we suffer with him, if we live the life that Christ lived, our salvation, our Savior, is Jesus Christ. Living as Christ lived is our salvation. And our salvation is now. It's not something we're earning it's something we're choosing to value as a precious gift from God. Okay. 
Now, many of you are probably sitting there thinking, well, what about Philippians 2.12? You know, where it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This was something, I, I that passage I gave a message on about four years ago. If you want to go look it up, there's, there's something um, that you might learn from it. But in addressing this specific thing about salvation, working out your own salvation does not mean earning your own salvation. It is actually an instruction on how to conduct your life in salvation. We have received salvation, now how do we conduct our life? Read verses 5 through 11, and then read verse 13. That will give you the proper context to what is being said in, in Philippians 2.12. And verse 13, I just want to touch on that specifically. It's the one that we often uh, leave out when we're reading verse 12, and we go to this often used scripture. And verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. For it is God who works in you to do his will and his good pleasure. God is the one doing the work in us. If we have his spirit and we live by the spirit. And 5 through 11 is in essence saying, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And it goes to talk about himself being equal with God, but not finding that a problem, but rather humbling himself and serving us. That's the mindset. That's the lifestyle Christ lived when he came and walked on earth. He did what he did for the joy that was set before him, and that is us to be joint heirs in the kingdom of God with him. But we live like he lives. That is having the mind of Christ is how we live. And we have been saved from a way of death. Sin is a way of death. Following Christ and living in Christ, we have righteousness, and that is the way of life. And it is a gift from God that we even know how to live and conduct ourselves in a way that is pleasing to God. And that saves us from a life of death and sin. Brethren, we've been given an incredible, incredible gift of salvation. Unimaginable. I think we're going to look back through all eternity and go, wow, you know, that was something I didn't even value as much as I should have. We have salvation from dead works to a new living way in life in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. As we approach Passover... Let us consider this gift of salvation that Christ gave to us, not only through his death, but also through his life. And let us live out a way of salvation.